All right, this video is going to show how to create two trend lines using only one data set. And the purpose of this is for fitting different regions of a heating curve so that we can get trend lines for the flat regions versus the sloped regions. So I have got a set of data here that includes the time in seconds and then how the temperature is changing as that time progresses. I'm doing this in Google Sheets, but all of the things I'm going to do here should be possible in most spreadsheet programs. You may just need to figure out where those features are located depending upon which program you're using. In order to create my initial graph of this data, I'm going to click this insert chart button or I could come to the insert menu and go to chart here but I'm just going to click the button. Um, if you've got your data set up in the spreadsheet, uh, sometimes it will be able to guess which data you want to plot. But if you get this screen when you hit insert chart, then you're going to actually have to select your data to plot. Um, so I did this intentionally because I wanted to just show how to handle this situation if it occurs. So notice here the graph shows up and it says no data. I'm going to make this a little bigger. And over here on the right, there's a chart editor screen. Um, Google Sheets, for whatever reason, likes you to uh, set the, the Y values first and then the X values. So the Y values here are referred to as the series. So I'm going to click Add Series, and then it's going to ask me to select a range. And I'm going to select from the label all the way down to the bottom of my data. Now, your data might be a lot longer than mine, um, but this is just for demonstration purposes. That's why I made it shorter. Okay, now you'll notice that when I did this, um, the chart type that is applied is actually a column chart. So now is the time to change your chart type to what is appropriate for scientific data, which is usually a scatter chart. So I'm going to select a scatter chart here from under setup. And now we can start to see um, something that looks a little bit more like the data we're expecting to see here. So um, uh, two different regions in this data that have different slopes that we're going to want to fit with trend lines. Now, there aren't any other numbers on our graph yet because we also have to tell the, the graph which values to use for the x-axis. So I'm going to now click Add x-axis. And um, if it doesn't give you the option to select a range, note that the little graph-looking icon here on the right, uh, that allows you to then click that button and then select a data range like we did initially for the y values. So for the X values, I'm going to choose the time column. I'm going to drag all the way down, and I'm going to hit OK. And so now you can see we have um, both X values and Y values on this chart. And again, our data is all showing up, so both regions of the data. Now, um, before we move on to labeling this properly, let's just point out here that the goal here is to fit both of these different sloped regions of the graph. And if I go to apply a trend line to this as is, um, the trend line is going to be under the Customize tab. And then under the Series tab, you scroll all the way to the bottom, and you'll see this box for a trend line. If I click that box right now, it's going to apply a trend line for the entire set of data. And that's not what we want, right? We want a trend line that's going to fit this uh, region down here that has a lower slope, and then we also want a second trend line that's going to fit this other region up here that has a steeper slope. And we'd also kind of like the data to be different colors so we can really make these two regions stand out. So I'm going to get rid of the trend line for now, and I'm going to show you how to split this data into two separate series but still have it plot sort of the same way that we're seeing right now, just with it separated into two separate series. The way you do this is pretty simple. We're going to first find the point where we want to split. So if I note here, um, this last point in the less steep region is at uh, 65 seconds. So you note the 65 there in that little label. So if I come down here to 65 seconds, I can see that that's my last data point for that section. So I'm going to take all the temperatures that come after that point, I'm going to select all of them. And I'm just going to drag them over to the next column. 
Notice that by doing that, I did not change the row that they're in because I still want them to be associated with the X value given over here in the first column of 70 seconds. I still want those X values to be associated the same way. But I basically want to split the data here so that I've only got data points for the first few X values uh, in one series. And then I've got the data points for the next set of X values in the second series or second column. I'm also going to label these now so that with something that makes sense. So this first set of points in the region that was not as sloped, right? That was that had a, a smaller slope or was flatter. That is the phase change from solid to liquid. So I'm going to label that as the solid to liquid phase change. And then these steeper sloped region, which was the second set of data points down here, that was representing the point where we're just warming up the liquid phase. So I'm going to label that as the liquid. Um, now, coming back to our graph, you'll notice on our graph, we've now lost uh, a bunch of the data, and it's also positioned somewhat oddly in the graph. So um, that's because if I double click on the graph and I come back into setup and I come down here, you'll notice that what's being plotted right now is the x-axis values and my S, my solid to liquid phase change series, right? Um, so you can see that that label updated when I changed it in the chart or sorry, in the, in the table. Um, what I want to do now is add the second column of data. So I'm going to add another series. I'm going to click on the graph box, and I want to make sure I select the entire column, even though it doesn't all include values, because um, again, we want our X values here to line up with all the values we have in each row. And since our X values go this entire span, then we want our series of Y values to also cover the same range of these rows in the table. Um, if you note here, this range is from cell 1 to cell 39, so our row 1 to row 39. I'm going to click OK there. And if I come back in here and investigate um, these other series, notice that for the B column, it was row 1 to row 39, right? And if I look at the time column, it's row 1 to row 39. So you want to make sure you're, you're using all the rows when you plot it. Now, if you do this correctly, You'll note here, it automatically has applied different colors to the two different series. And so you can clearly see now that these two sets of data are separated from each other in the graph because they have different colors. And in fact, if I double click on the data and uh, go under customize and then under series, I can change the color of those points or I can also add my trend line. So if I add my trend line now, notice it's only fitting that first segment of the data. If I click on the other series, oops, it doesn't work that way. On the, uh, let me show you how to switch series from within here. So if I'm in the Customize tab and I have this drop-down menu here for the series, I can switch to the other series by just using that drop-down menu. And now I will be editing the points that are in red. And so again, I can change the color if I want to, and I can also add my trend line. And so now you will see both of these sets of data have their own trend lines. And if I want to show the equation for those trend lines, um, that is going to be under this label drop down menu. If I go to label and go to use equation up here in the legend at the top, it's going to now show the equation for the trend line for the red data. Um, if I again switch back over to my other series, I can show the equation as a label for the other set of data as well. And so you'll notice here now I've got both the equations of those lines that we have fit to the data. So that pretty much rounds out how you do this. Um, as a reminder, do not forget to make sure that your graph has all of the proper elements that a graph should have. So it should have a proper title. Go ahead and give this a title of mean curve of cyclohexane biphenyl mixture. Um, I like to have this formatted nicely where it's centered and I usually also make the font size pretty big. You can change the color if you want to make it stand out a little bit more. I'll make it black. You can change the font. You could bold it if you wanted to. Right, so all those features are available there. Um, because I've made the font size so big for the title, notice that that makes the font size of everything else look quite small. Uh, so in the context of the size of the graph, these fonts should really be a little bit bigger. Um, so I'm going to go ahead and make, let's see, if I made my 
title, a 30 point font size, and let's go down two sizes for the labels. So let's make this 20. And then same thing down here. Notice I'm, I'm accessing this by just double clicking on the labels for the axes. And I'll make that one 20 as well. If I want to add titles for my axes, that's going to be under chart and axes titles here. So I can come down to my horizontal axis title. That is my time. Um, and again, font size is pretty small there. So let's make this bigger. We'll make this font size for the, oops, for the axes. Um, one step down from the title so i'll do it as 24. and then if i want to switch to my vertical axes that's my temperature and temperature is going to be in degrees celsius and again i will make that font size 24 it's just make it nice and big um, and last but not least my legend font size should probably also be a little bit bigger and so, yeah, that pretty much rounds that out. Um, now, if you uh, let me go ahead and just show one last final thing here. So if you wanted to print this graph, um, let's see, I think you can download it as an image or download it individually as a PDF. But if we're really we're if we were trying to insert this into an actual lab report, then what we would really want to do is uh, bring this graph into a word processing document. So what I'm going to do really quickly here is open up a Google Doc and just show you how easy this is to import the graph. So if I select on the, the graph, and I can either do Control, Copy, or I can come up here and go to Copy Chart. And then in the Word document, if I just paste, it'll give me the option if I'm using Google Docs to keep the spreadsheet linked. I highly suggest that. Because if you decide at some point that you want to go back and change something about your graph, I can switch back over to Google Sheets. Let's say I wanted to rename this to, instead of calling it a heating curve, let's call it the freezing point determination of the cyclohexane biphenyl mixture. All right, so I changed that title. Um, I could, you know, I don't know, let's make this bold or something like that. You could even change things about the data. You know, a lot of, a lot of things could be altered here. But if I come back to my Word document now, I see how it now has this button that says update. If I click that, it will grab all the updates to the graph from the Excel or from the Google Sheets file, which is super nice. Um, I can also resize this once I get it in this document, but remember that size-wise, um, graphs should always be about the, the width of the page that you're putting them into. So always make them as big as possible. And uh, yeah, you could then just um, create your second graph and post that in here on the same page if they both fit. And then just export or download this file as a PDF to finish off the assignment. So I hope that was helpful. Um, I know this was a bit of a long video, but hopefully that helped understand kind of how you're supposed to go about creating these graphs for this lab.